We know that volatilisation losses of top dress urea in winter crops in southern Australia can be as high as 23%. Research demonstrates that these losses can be significantly decreased by using green urea. We also know what the key drivers are and the conditions that favour losses. Unfortunately, we have no or minimal control over any of them. Therefore, our only option to combat volatilisation losses is green urea. Green urea also provides timing and operational benefits by expanding the spreading window. So the use of green urea is a compelling case. Ultimately, there needs to be an economic payback to justify its use. To demonstrate the value of green urea, we will use a series of Mallee wheat trials conducted in 2013, 14 and 16, comparing urea to green urea. To run the economics, we will price urea at $1,300 a tonne, green urea at a 3% premium at $1,350 a tonne, APW wheat at $480 a tonne, and we'll add $20 a tonne for H2 and minus $20 for ASW grade. The green cells in the tables highlight a favourable green urea outcome. In 2013, growing season rainfall was 222 mil with yields around 2.3 tonne to the hectare. Treatments had no nitrogen at sowing or 50 kilograms of urea. Top dress applications occurred at growth stage 31 where rainfall totaled 35 mil over the week of after the week of application. Ideal conditions to move urea safely into the soil. While green urea didn't provide a significant yield or protein response for either of the comparative treatments, green urea did provide a significant nitrogen grain removal response and subsequently a greater financial return, where 100 kilograms of green urea was applied with no upfront nitrogen. Where 50 kilograms of urea was banded up front, the financial return using green urea was less than using urea. In 2014, growing season rainfall was 214 mil, with yields around three tonne to the hectare. Treatments had no nitrogen at sowing and were then top dressed with 87 kilograms to the hectare of urea or green urea at growth stage 30 or growth stage 39. Green urea provides a significant yield and protein response compared to urea at growth stage 39 application. In both top dress timings, green urea provides a much higher financial return net of fertiliser costs. The key thing was that only 0.6 millimetres of rain fell four days post the growth stage 30 application and at the growth stage 39 application only one mil fell the day after application and 1.8 mil on the second day after the application. In 2016 growing season rainfall was 273 mil. The two of three comparison treatments had no nitrogen at sowing, while the third comparative treatment had 43 kilograms of urea up front. Urea and green urea was top dressed at either growth stage 25 or at growth stage 39. Eight millimetres of rain fell two days post the growth stage 25 top dress and subsequently there was no yield or protein response to green urea. However, there was a significant yield response to green urea at the growth stage 39 application with no sowing urea and a significant protein response where urea was banded at sowing. The yield response gave a financial improvement, whereas the protein response was at a break even position. Only 1.6 millimetres of rain fell over the second and third days following that top dress. It was 11 days after the top dress that an effective rainfall fell of 11 millimetres of rain. So based on the trial results and financial analysis, there is a clear trend of success using green urea in the absence of effective rain within the days of top dressing. As shown in the trials, there won't be a payback in every situation. However, while or however, where there are losses, green urea will, redu will reduce those losses and allow the nitrogen to be used for yield or protein, lifting the financial outcome. Operationally, green urea also widens the spreading window.